What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking about Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Season 2, Episode 1. This is my quick thoughts, early impressions. Down below, I want you guys to give me your quick thoughts, early impressions on this episode. And man, watching this episode, man, especially at the very beginning, it felt like I was watching a movie. I mean, you can just feel that different vibe when you watch Raising Canaan. And it was good to see, you know, power in like a summer type setting or whatever. Because we used to see in power when it's cold or whatever. But it was good to see like the sunlight. It wasn't as dark toned as we're used to seeing. And that was good. You know what I'm saying? It was good seeing the beach and all that stuff. And I believe they did a great job by setting that foundation for each of these characters storyline. Your boy Lulu, man. We got to talk about Lulu and Jessica. Jessica was getting her cheeks clapped by Crown Camacho. She said, you know what? Lulu ain't getting the job done, so I guess I gotta go sleep with Crown. And man, that was crazy. Your girl Jessica, she gonna sleep her way to the top, right? And I guess she got a, you know, opportunity to go out there to California and, you know, see what she gonna do out there. But your boy Lulu, he damn near seemed like he was falling in love with the new singer Zisa. I mean, that look he was giving her, that wasn't a look of, oh man, she's talented. That was a look of, I'm in love with this girl. But that's just me. That's how I took it. And did y'all see how Jukebox was looking at her? Jukebox was looking at her like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get this girl all the smoke. Because you already know Jukebox thinks she's cold with it. And when Lulu was telling Jukebox, like, look, she's good, ain't she? Jukebox was like, yeah, all right. And she gave her that look. It's going to be a very interesting storyline to see Jukebox and this Zisa character um, work together. Seeing that they're both going to be in that studio, it's going to be some tension. And I won't be surprised if we see some drama between the two. And we're going to see if Jessica sleeping with Crown is going to create better opportunities for Famous. But we know Famous did piss her off this episode telling her like, look, you sleeping with Lulu. I thought it was going to make better opportunities for me, but that didn't happen. So he was pissed off, which made Jessica pissed off. And in my opinion, that's why Jessica did what she did, because it's making better opportunities for her. Not famous necessarily, right? This is why Jessica was like, well, I don't have nothing else here. So I can't wait to see how that's all going to play out. Now, what's up with your boy Scrappy? In this episode, Rock told him, stay away from the cars. You need to stop all that gambling stuff. This dude did not listen at all. End up getting arrested. I'm looking like, dude, you messing up already. We thought Kanye was going to come in making mistakes. No, it's Scrappy. He's making mistakes already. He cannot afford to do this. Rock can't afford to have people in her organization mess up. She's already been talking about that in this episode. She can't even afford for the competition to mess up. So this is why she wants to bring in Rorel and take him away from Unique. I told you guys. I mean, I understand, you know, keep your enemies closer, you know, type of strategy. But man, I don't trust that Rorel dude at all. I think he's going to try something and I think he's going to stay loyal to Unique. But we're going to see. You guys let me know down below. Now, your boy Unique end up getting out at the end. It was crazy, man. They didn't waste no time. This dude was not about to sit in there. He was in there dropping off some boys in there, you know, getting into a fight. That was funny. But to see him get out so quick, that's good because we don't have to wait on him. You know, usually sometimes we have to wait for these characters to get out. But I'm glad we did not have to wait on that. So we don't got to go, you know, into wondering when this guy is going to get out. He's out now. So that makes everything a little bit more interesting to see him back on the blocks and, you know, try to rebuild his organization and see what Rock has done because she's she's dominating, y'all. She is dominating and she's trying to take over the 40s. She's trying to give Lulu the 40s. Lulu ain't trying to do this no more. I told y'all in my predictions video that I believe Rock and Lulu will have problems this season. Lulu really wants to focus on music. He's trying to put all the work on Marvin and Rock to do, and he really wants to step away. But that's going to be a problem. Rock is not going to allow him to just step away. So what do y'all think about that? Now, Detective Howard, let's talk about your boy, Detective Howard. Now, we already know what time it is for him. We went over all different types of scenarios on what would happen in of course, one of those, you know, fan predictions was him just acting like he didn't remember anything. This dude know exactly what the hell went down. He ain't forgot nothing. The thing is, Detective Burke, she doesn't really believe all that for real. So she's going to snoop around and investigate and see what really went down. And we knew this was going to happen. Detective Howard is trying to, you know, push her away from investigating this whole shooting. But she's not going to do that. 
But y'all saw Detective Howard. He rolled up on Kanan and tried to just breeze off like no one saw him. Kanan already knows. And when Rock told him that Detective Howard is still alive, boy, that dude damn near pissed himself. He was like, really? He couldn't believe it. Like, ain't no way this dude is alive. Yes, he is alive and he's going to be an issue. I'm glad that they showed Detective Howard and Rock, you know, walk up to each other at the end of the episode. And I want to see what's going to happen in episode two between those two. You already know it's about to go down. And y'all know Detective Howard, he going to be on one. He's not going to play around this season. Just like Unique, he ain't going to play around this season. Rock, the last thing that she needs is more people, you know, coming at her and seeing that she will be going up against the mafia this season, which we should be seeing very, very soon. She cannot afford to be slipping up at all, in my opinion. Now, my quick thoughts, early impressions on Kanan. We already knew how Kanan was going to feel. He was at, you know, he was in Virginia, whatever, with his aunt Deb. And he didn't really want to come back home. He's just second guessing everything that he's done. Of course, Jukebox has to tell him what you did, what your mom made you do was wrong. You should talk to her about that. And Kanan does not want to disappoint his moms. He was talking about how, you know, I really did this because I wanted to protect her. I thought I could, but now I don't think I can. And Kanan, he's going to have to have that conversation with Rock. He did tell her, you know, he don't think he can protect her and why he did it. But he needs to talk to her on why she made this dude shoot a cop. That's a no-no. We, we know this, right? That's not a part of the code. You don't shoot no law enforcement. And what she made him do was foul for real. On top of that, it's his dad. So you already know what time it is, man. Your girl Rock, she ain't playing around with some of the dirt she's out there doing. And, you know, Symphony, he's telling her, like, look, I care for you. I care for Kanan. You know, I want the best for both of y'all. This kid right here, he's scared. He is scared. And Rock, she knows this for real. And deep down inside, she knows the truth. She knows what Symphony is talking about is true. Talking about, oh, you think you could tell me, you know, about my son and this and that. Look, none of that really matters. You know what he's talking about is true. And if Rock could have the perfect life, she would probably, you know, live in a fairy tale with Symphony. But no, she doesn't have that perfect life. And she understands she's in the game. So having him around, as far as taking him serious in a relationship, it cannot happen because you want to put him at risk. So this is why she's not really with him. But y'all can see how she was looking like, man. I really want to be with this dude, man. But the life I'm living, that's not going to play out the right way. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm eager to see what's going to happen with Tiffany's character. Will we see more of him this season? Um, we learned about Tony Deep Throat. She ended up leaving from what Marvin found out. And it's probably good because if she stuck around, you already know what time it was. She was going to come up missing anyway. And Marvin went to the anger management therapy and his therapist ain't playing around. She told him to sit his ass down. She wasn't playing around with this dude. So we're going to see that build up. Jukebox, of course, is still pissed off at Marvin. She was looking at pictures of her and her mother. We know that storyline will develop as the season goes. But this whole, you know, thing between her and her pops, it's going to take some time for that to be fixed. And based off this first episode, it's probably going to take a long time for Jukebox to finally open up to her pops because, man, she's still pissed off about the events of season one in you know, Marvin's trying to fix things, but it's going to be difficult for him to go in there and do that. On top of that, when her mom comes back into the picture, you already know it's going to be even harder for him to do it. But overall, I felt like this episode was pretty solid. Um, I really liked how they built up the storylines for these characters. It really did feel like I was watching a movie at times um, in this episode. And you already know it's about to get crazy, man. We ain't even got introduced to the mafia yet. We know that's about to get crazy. On top of that, we know your boy Unique is about to raise hell on these streets. And this whole recruitment that Rock is trying to do, I would not be surprised if it's going to backfire on her. But as far as Kanan being in this game, you can really tell it's really getting to him and the things that he's done in season one. It's pretty much had a really huge effect on him. And I'm very eager to see how he's going to develop in season two. And from what I've been hearing, he's supposed to become way more darker in season two. And at the same time, Kanan did explain earlier on in the episode, when you kill a man or shoot a man at the very beginning, it's a big shocker. But each and every time you do it over and over and over, it becomes the norm. So eventually this lifestyle that Kanan is living, it's going to feel normal down the line and it's going to be nothing to him, right? And we're going to see why Kanan is the way he is, you know, in the original power. 
but I will be dropping a full recap for you guys tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I want to thank you guys for all the love, all the support. The Power Universe is back, and that's a good thing, man. It's a good thing. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your buddy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.